Hi guys, Anne McKinnell here. Thanks for joining me. To begin our lesson on natural light, let's first talk about the various characteristics of light and how those affect your photographs. The fact is that there's no such thing as bad light. Once you understand the characteristics of natural light and how to use each of them to your advantage, you'll be able to make photographs at any time of day under any lighting conditions. There are three important characteristics to consider. The direction of light, the quality of light, and the color of light. Let's talk about direction first. This photo is an example of side light. You can tell by the way the shadows are falling that the light is coming from the right side of the frame. The shadows are key. When you use side light, all of the little crevices are in shadow, emphasizing the textures and the shape of your subject. Here's another example of side light. Notice how the shadow itself has become an important feature of the image, emphasizing the line at the top of the dune and creating an interesting curve for our eyes to follow through the frame. This photo uses front light. Front light is when the light comes from behind you and hits the front of your subject directly. Front light can be harsh and unforgiving, washing out colors and minimizing textures. I really don't have very many images in my portfolio that use front light. But if you're going to use it, it's best to use it when the sun is low in the sky when it gives off that pretty golden light. We'll talk about that more when we get to the lesson on golden hour. Compare these two photos. The one on the left uses front light. Notice the lack of shadows. The photo on the right uses side light. It emphasizes both the textures and the shape of the cactus. So you can see why I usually prefer to use side light over front light. Backlight is when the sun is directly in front of you and behind your subject, lighting it from behind. I love backlight because the deep contrast between the highlights and the shadows is so dramatic. Backlight is perfect for making silhouettes when you have subjects with a great shape. It also works well when you have a colorful sky. It does have its challenges though, and we'll talk about those more in the lesson dedicated to backlight. Now let's look at the quality of light. By quality, I mean how hard or soft the light is. Hard light happens midday, when the sun is high in the sky and there are no clouds to filter the light. Soft light can also happen midday if there are lots of clouds, or if you photograph in the shade when, where the light is nice and even, but generally in midday when there are no clouds, the light is hard and harsh. As the sun gets lower in the sky, the light becomes softer. And as it gets even lower, even below the horizon, it gets even softer. Soft light is very even with no shadows or bright spots, so it's great for photographing waterfalls. Soft light tends to produce soft pastel types of photos, which is perfect for flowers. Finally, let's talk about the color of light. The color of light changes during the course of the day. Let's take a look at those three desert photos again for an example. I'll go back here to this one. Okay. During midday, the light is bright with very little color. Just after sunrise or just before sunset, when the sun is low in the sky, it gives off a, a warm golden glow. And as the sun falls below the horizon, the light becomes more blue. We'll be talking in detail about the kinds of photographs to make under each lighting scenario in the coming lessons. But for now, here is your assignment to help you understand the characteristics of light. First, I'd like you to photograph the same subject under front light, back light, and side light. You can do this simply by moving around your subject. Next, photograph a subject when it has harsh light and in soft light. Try to think of something easily accessible to you, perhaps in your yard, that is in sun for part of the day and in shade for part of the day, and photograph it in the sun and in the shade and compare those. 
If you don't have anything like that, you can just take some object from your house and carry it into the, into the light and into the shade and photograph it that way. Also, during the course of your day, pick a subject outside that you'll see throughout the day, maybe something out your window, and take notice of how the light changes on the subject as the sun moves across the sky. Okay, I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.